Let's turn today to Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, and verse 7. And Jesus began speaking a parable to the invited guests when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, here we read that Jesus had been invited, verse 1, to the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees for a meal. As we considered in our last study, Jesus was willing to go anywhere when he was invited. He had no inhibitions about going and having a meal in the houses of unbelievers or hypocrites or sinners or whatever it was. But he did not compromise. Wherever he went, he proclaimed the truth, even if it offended and hurt the people who invited him. And here we see one example like that. When he observed that at this large feast, the invited guests were picking out the places of honor at the table. He said to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. Let someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And he who invited you both shall come and say to you, give place to this man and then in disgrace you proceed to occupy the last place. This is a very practical suggestion. And Jesus spoke in the level of common sense. Avoid public humiliation. But it was more than that. Jesus was trying to point out their lust for honor. If they wanted to get light on it. But when you are invited... Go and recline at the last place, so that when the one who has invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher, then you will have honor in the sight of all who are at the table with you. Jesus was saying, even if you are a selfish person seeking honor from others, the sensible thing to do is to go and sit at the last place and be invited up higher, rather than to go and sit at the first place and to be pushed down lower when somebody bigger than you comes for the function. But of course we understand that Jesus was thereby speaking about how it should be in God's kingdom. That if I seek a place of honor today in the church, God may have to push me down one day when he finally sorts out the seating arrangement in the final day in the kingdom. It's far better to take a low place and be to be invited up higher. And that is the context in which he said, verse 11, everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled. And he who humbles himself shall be exalted, which is a spiritual principle in the kingdom of God. Do I want exaltation by God in the final day? Or do I want exaltation in the eyes of men today? Am I willing to be misunderstood rejected, despised, humbled, humiliated, to go down in the eyes of men today so that one day when Jesus comes, he will determine the proper place for all of us. Very often we have the lust to determine the proper place for each person, but that is part of the desire to be like God that makes us determine who is great and who is small. We cannot assess a right. It's far better to leave it to God to decide that. He will decide who should be exalted and who should be humbled. But he's told us on what basis he's going to do it. We know that Jesus has been exalted to the highest place in heaven. Philippians 2 tells us that. Verses 5 onwards. But it also tells us in that portion why Jesus was exalted, not because he was the Son of God, he came here as a man, it says he humbled himself. And because he humbled himself the most among all human beings that have ever lived, he has been exalted to the highest place by the Father. That is a matter of righteousness, not a matter of partiality. We can ask ourselves, who will be next to Jesus in the kingdom of God? The answer is very clear. Those who have humbled themselves to the greatest extent next to Jesus will be next to him in the kingdom. Not many who think 
that they have been very radical and wholehearted. God will determine that in the final day. And Jesus also went on to say to the one who had invited him, now he had finished correcting the people who came for the dinner, now he corrects the person who has invited him for dinner. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and repayment come to you. Here's another word that Jesus spoke, which is good for us to take seriously. He says, we do good when we hope to get some return for it. But he says, if you're like God, you're going to do good to people who cannot repay you. That is the principle here. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, don't invite your friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and repayment come to you. But when you give a reception, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, the people who don't have homes, the homeless, and you will be blessed, since they don't have the means to repay you. How many believers are there who even attempt to follow this principle? He said, do not invite your friends, verse 12, or your brothers, or your relatives, or your rich neighbors, because they will invite you in return. But look for those whom God has called, the poor of the world whom he has chosen to be rich in faith, who do not have the opportunity to invite you back. Invite them. Give them gifts, because they are not able to repay. And you will be blessed, verse 14, because they do not have the means to repay you. And you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. There will be a repayment. Instead of that repayment coming from the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind, it will come from God. Blessed are those who take these words seriously and seek to live according to them. And when one of those who were reclining at table with him heard this, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus responded to that message too, to that statement. He said, A certain man was giving a big dinner, and he invited many. And at the dinner hour he sent a slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. And here Jesus is obviously speaking about the gospel message, the invitation to come and eat bread in the kingdom of God. You see this man had said, blessed is everyone who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And the gospel message is essentially an invitation to come to a permanent meal in God's kingdom. To be a part of God's kingdom, to, eat, to make God's kingdom your home, where you can always eat a meal. And he said this to him, a certain man, this is God, a picture of God giving a, a feast, a feast of the gospel, invited many, people all over the world have been invited. And at the time, there is a particular time in with, within which we must respond. He sent a slave to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is ready now. Jesus came in the fullness of time. The way of salvation was opened up through his death and resurrection. Everything is ready now. This is the gospel invitation now. Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. He's speaking to the Jewish people how they had other priorities in their life, even though they were religious. First one said, I bought a piece of land. His land was more important to him than this dinner. Please consider me excused. Another said, I bought a five yoke of oxen. His business was more important to him than this dinner. Please consider me excused because I've got to try them out. Another said, I've married a wife. And for that reason, I cannot come. Um, his marriage, his relation, his relatives, his family was more important. And this is how it is. Property, business, relatives, family. These can hinder us 
from the gospel invitation. Family members, property, our job, business, all these things can hinder us so that we don't respond to the gospel invitation, respond to the call to discipleship. And the slave came back and reported this to his master, and the head of the household became angry and said to his slave, Go out into the streets and lanes of the city. This is a message to the Jews of that time. You don't respond to the invitation that God gives? Okay. God's going to go out to all these other people whom you despise. You, you think that the Gentiles, the people of other nations, are poor and crippled and blind and lame? All right, they're going to be invited. And the slave said, Master, what you commanded has been done, verse 22, and there's still room. And the master said, Go into the highways, along the hedges, and compel them to come in. My house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste of my dinner. Those who were invited first missed it completely. The Jews missed it. And many Christians today can miss it because they think that they are God's favorites. No, it is those who respond to the call of discipleship. To be disciples of Jesus, not just to believe in him and to, as they say, attend church and attend meetings. To be religious but to be wholehearted disciples, to say, Lord, my family, my wife, my yoke of oxen, my land, my business, my job, my property, nothing is more important than to sit with you. How many people respond to God like that and say, Lord, you are more important to me than my family or my business or my property? Those are the ones who responded aright. God wants his house to be filled, we read, with such people. And this is the call of the gospel. Put God first. Let him be first in your life, more important to you than your family, your job, and your property, and then you will find a place in God's kingdom.